So our five-year-old grandson, Ducky, that's not the name on his birth certificate, but that's what we call him, Ducky. Ducky's favorite restaurant is Burger King. Now, I think his favorite restaurant is Burger King, not because of their fabulous cuisine, uh, not because of the ambiance of the restaurant, uh, not because he can have it his way. I think the reason Ducky likes Burger King is that at the age of five, he has learned something very important, that the Burger King that is closest to his house has charging stations inside. He can go and he can charge up his iPad while he's eating his chicken nuggets because he's very concerned about how much power uh, his little battery has because I'll hear him ask his brother, how much percent do you have, he says, because he talks, I don't know, he talks kind of funny, kind of a gravelly voice for a five-year-old. How, mu how much power do you have, he'll ask his brother. You know, it's like this little competition. You know, and he's just so worried. He doesn't want his iPad to run out of power. So I think that is why he likes to go to Burger King, because there's a charging station inside. Well, he's learned something very important at five years old, that you need to charge up your battery something that Jesus was also concerned about. As we look at our scripture this morning from Mark's gospel, I'll be using uh, the NIV, the New International Version. I'm going to begin at verse 30. I'm going to skip around a little bit if you're following along, and I'll help you stay up with me. But Mark 6, verse 30 begins like this. The apostles gathered around Jesus and reported to him all they had done and taught. Then because so many people were coming and going that they did not even have a chance to eat, Jesus said to them, Come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. So they went away by themselves in a boat to a solitary place. But many who saw them leaving recognized them and ran on foot from all the towns and got there ahead of them. When Jesus landed and saw the large crowd, he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began to teach them many things. And then verse 53 when they had crossed over, they landed at Genesaret and anchored there. As soon as they got out of the boat, people recognized Jesus. They ran throughout the whole region and carried the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went, into villages, towns, or countryside, they placed the sick in the marketplace. They begged him to let them touch even the edge of his cloak. And all who touched him were healed. Let us pray. Almighty God, still the busyness of our minds and open our hearts to you that we may hear your word. For us this day. Amen. Well, a few years ago, several years ago, I had a car that the fuse on my um, gas gauge went out. It wasn't an easy fix. It wasn't simple like pulling down the, the fuse box underneath the steering column and just changing out the fuse. It was going to take something a lot more uh, complicated. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> it was going to be a lot more complicated than that. <coughs> you had to <coughs> pull out the back seat and <coughs> basically rip out all the stuff to be able to <coughs> change out the um, fuse box or change out the fuse that had burned out. <clears throat> See, anybody got a mint on them? 
I'll take it. <clears throat> this is like, uh, let's make a deal. I'll give you, oh, here's a mint right here. Here we go. I'll take that. Thank you. Thank you. Hold on just a second. We're going to take an intermission, and then we're going to start over. Okay, here we go. All right. Thank you. All right, so the uh, fuse on my uh, gas tank went out. And you're going to have to rip out all the back end of the car to be able to change it, okay? So while it was a simple fix, it was not going to be easy to do at all. So most of the time it wasn't a problem. What I would do is I would just kind of keep an eye on my mileage. I knew about how many miles I could go on a tank of gas and just pay attention until one night when I didn't and I ran out of gas. I literally, it was after a meeting, it was dark uh, and the car just died on the side of the road and I found myself walking to the nearest gas station buying a gas can and filling my tank up and going on my way. It was fine until I found myself running on empty. Have you ever been like that? Have you ever found yourself running on empty? And I'm not talking about just your car, but running on empty spiritually, emotionally, mentally, the, just, just being completely depleted. Well, that's what's going on in our scripture this morning. Our disciples were running on empty, and Jesus knew it. Now, here's where we pick up. We pick up from where we left our disciples last week. Now, if you remember, we had just sent them off around the countryside, around to all those little towns and villages around the Sea of Galilee with the authority of Jesus to preach, to teach, to heal. And so that's where we pick them up today. They have just come back from their first missionary journey. Now, this little passage that I had is like the, the, the bread between the, the sandwich because what's in the middle, the part that I skipped, was the feeding of the 5,000. Now, most people don't even pay attention to the bookends that I read this morning. They want to skip that part and get to the good stuff. But if you ask me, this is the good stuff. Because did you hear what Jesus called his disciples in verse 30? He called them apostles. Now, this is the very first time Jesus calls his disciples apostles. Apostles mean one who is sent out. Because now, now they're no longer rookies. They're no longer interns. They're no longer newbies. They've got the job. They've been sent out. They were out there teaching, preaching, and healing. And now they've come back running on empty, totally depleted and exhausted. In fact, Scripture tells us they had been so busy, they didn't even stop to eat anything. And Jesus looks at them, and he says in verse 31, Come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. Come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. Jesus could see that they had worked nonstop, that these guys were running on empty. And if they continued at that pace, doing what they were doing, then they weren't going to be any good to anyone. Because you cannot serve from an empty well, from an empty tank. It's like the story about uh, Douglas MacArthur II, the nephew of the famous General MacArthur. Now, 
MacArthur too. He served under the leadership of John Foster Dulles, who at the time was the Secretary of State. And one evening, Dulles calls the MacArthur home and was looking for him. And the wife answers the phone and, 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 you know, is inquiring where her husband was. And, and she's a little aggravated. She could you could hear it in her voice, and she says to Dulles, MacArthur is where MacArthur always is. At night, on the weekends, on the holidays, day, night, Saturday, Sunday, he is at the office, thank you, and hangs up. Well, Dulles immediately calls the office looking for MacArthur, and he says to him, go home at once. Your home front is crumbling. Well, just like that story, Jesus knew if the disciples continued at the rate that they were going, their home front would be crumbling. Jesus knew that those disciples needed Sabbath rest. You see, health was a, a primary religious duty in Jesus' day. You were to honor God with your bodies. You treated it like a temple. In fact, 1 Corinthians six nineteen says, a dwelling place, our bodies should be a dwelling place for the Lord. Well, how often do we treat our bodies like a temple, like a dwelling place for the Lord? I mean, I think if we're really honest, well, we might treat our bodies more like a tent or a shack. I will tell you, I am a fixer-upper for sure. We fill our bodies with, uh, and our lives with, with fast food, with busy schedules, with late hours. We are constantly going. We are this breathless life of hurry and scurry. And you would think that with all the electronic devices in our life, all those little conveniences, with a little computer at our fingertips, just, just this big, that we'd have far more time for leisure, that we'd be able to work uh, faster and smarter, but it is not. Because you know what really happens is we've turned those little handheld devices into 24-hour accessibility to anyone and everyone. We don't put it down. And we find ourselves now working 24-7, and we don't take time to rest and renew. I mean, how many of us, me included, last night before we went to bed, checked our social media, or checked our email. And you know what happens is that we get so distracted by it that what we thought was going to take a few minutes took far longer than we thought, and we stay up later. Or like if it's a weeknight and you check your email, depending on what you find or what you've answered or what you've read, it'll interrupt your sleep. You'll toss and turn trying to figure out tomorrow's problem today because you went and you looked at your email. Well, friends, we were not created to work 24-7. You know, when you look in Scripture, God created the world in six days, and on the seventh day, he what? He rested. That's right. On the seventh day, he rested. Don't you think if it's good enough for God... If God needed to rest, don't you think we need to do the exact same thing that our bodies also need to rest, renew, and recharge? Sabbath rest is important to God. It is important to our bodies, and it was important to Jesus. When you look at Scripture, you see throughout Scripture and throughout the Gospels that Jesus would, would pull away from the crowd, that he would do that in order to catch a new glimpse of God. He would go up to the mountaintop to pray. He would head out to a solitary place to be in communion with his Father. Jesus did not live his life one miracle after the next miracle after the next miracle with a quick prayer in between. No, it was, it was really the exact opposite. He would go from 
prayer place to prayer place with teaching, preaching, and miracles in between. His relationship with the Father, his communion with God was his primary focus. He knew that he couldn't do all the rest. He couldn't do the preaching, the teaching, and the miracles if he didn't. So his primary focus was communion with God. All the rest was lanyap. It was secondary. Jesus knew the importance of that Sabbath rest. He needed it for himself. He wanted it for his disciples, which is why he said, come away with me. Let us go to a quiet place for rest. And he wants it for us as well. The truth of the matter is that we are not going to be good at anything. We will not do our work well, our day jobs, our real jobs, our church jobs, our volunteer jobs, our family jobs as spouse or child or friend. If we are running on empty, if we don't take the time to recharge our batteries and to renew ourselves, so quickly and briefly, how do we slow down? How do we slow down and make our relationship with God primary, the same way that Jesus did? Well, I think we do it the same way Jesus did. First, we have to be intentional. You know, we make appointments for everything these days, especially in these post-COVID or this COVID environment. I don't know that we're post yet, but this COVID environment that we live in, we make, we make appointments for the doctor. We make appointments for the internet people to come to our house. We even have to make an appointment at the DMV to get our address changed on our driver's license. So you have to make an appointment for all those things. Why not make an appointment with God? Set a time Set a place. Put, put it in your phone. Set an alarm. It doesn't matter if it's morning, night, any time is good. Is a good time to be with God. So be intentional. Second, find a quiet place. Our scripture says, come away with me. That was the intentional invitation. Come away with me to a solitary place. Where's your prayer place? Is it, if you have a contemplative spirit, maybe you have a corner in your house or a prayer closet. If you are more like me, I consider myself NASCAR. I don't have a contemplative spirit. I have a NASCAR spirit. I am loud and constantly running. And so, if that is your spiritual dynamic, then your solitary place may be on your morning walk or your bike ride or on the treadmill. But find that solitary place where you connect with God. And then the third thing is gather other disciples. Jesus said, come away with me he said to all of them, come away with me to a solitary place. An intentional invitation to a solitary place to all the disciples. And so gather with other disciples. Maybe that's in a Bible study, a Sunday school class, a small group. 9.30s in the chapel on Tuesdays where we gather for a brief devotion and a time of prayer. Where is that place that you gather with other disciples? I don't know. 11 o'clock on Sunday morning looks pretty good too. You know, what if, what if this place became our charging station? What if there was a sign outside that says charging station inside because this was the place? This was the place that we intentionally gathered with other disciples to recharge and renew ourselves so that we could go out there 
and do our day jobs and our real jobs and our volunteer jobs and our family jobs in a better way possible. Because we've spent a little time in here with some other disciples connecting, recharging with the great and good God that loves us so much. There's a story of a Navy jet fighter who shot himself out of the air, who shot himself out of the air. I, I told Charlie that wouldn't have happened if it was the Army, right? Because he's with the Army. This is, this is the Navy. Sorry, Navy guys. But what happened was he was going these supersonic speeds that he got in front of his mortar fire and shot himself down. Friends, we don't want to be like that. We don't want our life to be at such speeds that we shoot ourselves out of the air. Slow down. I want to invite you to be still and know God. Take intentional time to a solitary place with other disciples to recharge and renew your battery. Make this your recharging station. Accept Jesus' invitation to that quiet place. Because when we get in touch with God, I promise, God will touch you. Amen and amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, as we gather in this most holy and sacred space, fill us, recharge us, renew us, O oh Lord, that we might be filled with your spirit, energized, and sent out. Lord, better, better people, better disciples because of this time, this time of worship here. This is our prayer, O oh Lord. Amen.